It's time for a superhero fantasy. It's Batman, or rather, because the definite article has become so important to this franchise, it's the Batman. Fear is a tool. But when that light hits the sky, it's not just a call. It's a warning. Robert Pattinson reinvents billionaire Bruce Wayne as an elegantly wasted rock star recluse, willowy and dandyish in his black suit, with tendrils of slightly oily black hair falling over his face. But in costume as the Batman, he appears to bulk up 300%, taking on the Riddler, played by Paul Dano in a yucky rubber gimp mask, who in a vengeful, sore-style serial-killing frenzy is murdering Gotham City's corrupt political establishment one by one. Meanwhile, Zoe Kravitz plays Catwoman, who has her own beef with the city's crooked power players, including mob boss Carmine Falcone, played by John Turturro, and his creepy sidekick, Oswald the Penguin Cobblepot, played under heavy prosthesis by Colin Farrell. This is a hugely long, unwieldy, big, dark, murky movie, a film which appears to groan and clang like a piece of industrial machinery. Previous directors like Joel Schumacher and Tim Burton gave us Batman as a kind of stadium rock, but this is the techno approach to Batman, or the Batman, pioneered by Christopher Nolan in his way superior Dark Knight trilogy. And for a while, it is an amazing, if obviously derivative spectacle, but it's wildly overextended. The faux apocalyptic finale is ridiculous. The plot leads nowhere at all, at least partly, of course, because plot strands need to be left untied for the next film. And that absurdity for me sits uneasily with the overwhelming sense of pompous seriousness and darkness which has become so important for this kind of superhero melodrama. But I admit it, I did enjoy Tuturo and also Jeffrey Wright as the careworn Commissioner Gordon and the very stylish Zoe Kravitz and the vampiric Pattinson himself. On now to this luxuriously sleazy sentimental Bollywood extravaganza about the Mumbai underworld, directed by Sanjay Leela Bansali and starring Ali Abbat, inspired by the true story of Gangubai Kathiawadi, who as a teenager in the 1960s was tricked and trafficked into prostitution in Mumbai's Kamathipura red light district. But she rose to become a gang boss madam and, according to legend, campaigner for sex workers' rights. <laughs> This story is adapted from a tale in the true crime reportage bestseller Mafia Queens of Mumbai by Hussein Zaidi. And it is probably true that it softens and sentimentalises the real Gangabai's direct involvement in drugs and violence. But she's not totally softened. And in fact, for me, it is this streak of schmaltz within the gruesomeness and squalor which gives this film its outrageous energy and extravagance. There is something entertainingly brazen about it, a mad recklessness and brashness to go with the mawkishness. It has some storytelling voltage. Finally, I have to remind you real quick that House of Gucci is out on Blu-ray, a very amusing and OTT film from Ridley Scott that some people were needlessly solemn and po-faced about. And also on Tuesday the 8th of March at 6pm, I'm doing an online Zoom talk for that famously polymathic body, the Highgate Literary and Scientific Institution, which will be my miscellaneous thoughts on a miscellaneous selection of film clips. The point of which, of course, is to promote my book, The Films That Made Me, an edited selection of my essays and reviews for The Guardian. Click on the links below to book tickets for that talk and, of course, to buy the book itself. And finally, could you please just get over yourself and subscribe to this YouTube channel and leave a comment to say that you've subscribed. Be seeing you.